When I was in elementary school, I refused to hug my own mother for about three years. Not just her, I refused to hug anyone. See, I watched a lot of cartoons at the time, and while my parents were great and loving and I had friends at school, I probably learned a lot more about what normal behavior looks like from cartoons than from actual social interaction. Naturally, when boys in these cartoons were laughed at for being openly sad or affectionate or God forbid, girly, I internalized that really, really hard. The aversion to hugs, for me, was part of a larger pattern of avoiding anything I thought might make me look silly. Fortunately, by the time I was in high school, I had realized that that was something I needed to grow out of. I had kind of emulated the introverted nerd stereotype, and I eventually realized that that had turned me into a loner with no friends, and that that wasn't healthy. Relearning how to be open about my feelings and how to make friends became something I struggled with through all of high school, and in some ways, that struggle never quite ended. So when Hank Green made a song about My Little Pony, and when I decided to check it out, and when I realized to my confused bewilderment that I really liked it, and when I found out that lots of other guys my age and older also really liked it, and when I told people that I was one of them, and when I told people that I was a brony, oh my god, it was liberating. If I can tell people that I like colorful pastel ponies who sing about how great friendship is and that I don't care what you think, well, goddamn, I guess I really don't care what anyone thinks. I guess I really can just like what I like. Society be damned. And okay, th this next part is not normal at all. I grew up in a really progressive community with a lot of LGBT friends. But for me personally, after I came out as a brony, coming out as bisexual and telling everyone I had a boyfriend was easy. So if I've played my cards right, there should be two groups of people who are on board with my story so far. One group is other bronies. You guys, you've lived what I'm talking about. We've all gotten weird looks. We've all felt the need to justify our interest in this cartoon in a way we don't feel the need to justify our interest in other cartoons like Adventure Time or something. And we've all felt a certain amount of shame or at least weirdness when we realized that we actually like this thing. And I hope we all also know the feeling of breaking through that. I hope we all know the feeling of society telling us that this really isn't for you, and if you like it, you're probably gay or stupid or probably both. And the feeling of telling society, EAT MY ENTIRE ASS! I think that's why bronies are a thing, why we've formed such a strong, durable, cohesive community around a single cartoon. Very few, if any, other fandoms are permeated by quite this level of camaraderie. The other group of people who I think know what I'm talking about are other feminists. And not just any kind of feminist either, but like leftist, progressive, Tumblrite feminists. I feel the need to specify because in addition to being a brony, I am also this. I think rape culture is real and a problem, I want to close the gender pay gap, I spend way too much time on Tumblr, I am what people are talking about when they talk about SJWs. And since I think of myself as part of that cultural trend, I feel really confident when I say that a lot of feminists, when I was telling my story just now, were probably thinking to themselves, yeah, that's toxic masculinity. What you're describing is toxic masculinity. You internalized a really narrow definition of what men are supposed to be like, and then you eventually learned how to rebel against it. But but, 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 before I lose too many bronies, hear me out real quick. A lot of the time, what a community looks like to you is really different from person to person, and this is especially true online. What Twitter is like depends mostly on who you follow. What YouTube is like depends mostly on who you're subscribed to. And as for Tumblr, well, the Tumblr I see is the Tumblr that says men lose child custody cases way too often because our bullshit patriarchal society says that women are naturally better caregivers. My Tumblr is the Tumblr that says men are socialized to be obsessed with sex because sex is the only time society teaches us it's okay to be physically or emotionally close to other people. My Tumblr is the Tumblr that says men commit more suicide because we're told to bottle up all of our pain until we don't see any other way out. That's my Tumblr, and that's my feminism. Now, I'm not here to argue that Tumblr or feminism or S's or J's or W's are perfect, actually, and none of the stereotypes about them are wrong. Like, how would I even prove that? You see, according to the data, only 15% of active Tumblr users are literal harpies trying to kill all men. No, all I'm trying to say is, like, if you think that the gender pay gap isn't real, or that feminism has become too extreme, or that feminism is ruining video games, whatever, 
I disagree, but that's not what this video is about. Lots of other people have made great videos about all of those things. I just want us to be on the same page that like, it's not all about hating men and taking away things we like. So now that I've spent just a little bit of time defending feminism to bronies, I feel like the next step here might be to defend bronies to feminists. Because feminists out there, even though you're probably supportive of how I see being a brony as a rebellion against toxic masculinity, well, let me put it this way. A quick search for bronies on Tumblr comes up with accusations that we took over the fandom and pushed all the women out, that male fans of the show aren't necessarily bronies because all bronies are bad, I guess, that we're libertarian confederacy apologists, that we're anti-Black Lives Matter racists, that we're literally evil rape fetishists and fascists, and worst of all, that we wear fedoras. There's a lot to unpack here, but let's do a quick lightning round of the three biggest complaints. Complaint one, we took over the fandom from little girls and women who grew up with it. What exactly did we take over? Online, we tend to congregate on websites like Equestria Daily and Fimfiction.net, and those websites didn't exist before we came along. Meanwhile, in meat space, with conventions like BronyCon and Everfree Northwest and loads of others all over the world, those certainly didn't exist before we came along. We didn't take over anyone's spaces. We built our own spaces. Complaint two, we're all conservative reactionaries. All right, maybe there's a little bit of truth to this one, but it's not nearly as bad as you think. Small piece of evidence for that. BronyCon 2019 was the largest brony convention of all time, and they made pronoun stickers available to everybody, they went out of their way to put gender neutral signs on all of the bathrooms, and I was seeing gay and trans and bi pride flags on buttons and hats and flags worn as capes all over the convention. I know this isn't really proof of anything, but all I'm trying to say is that if you think it's all incels and Jordan Peterson fans, it's really not like that. Complaint three, we're sexualizing a show meant for little girls. Firstly, bronies usually go way out of our way to keep not safe for work stuff off or firmly hidden anywhere we have institutional power. Secondly, is it just me or is it kind of fucked up that there are so many children on the internet and we have no way of keeping them separate from the porn? There are toddlers spending hours on YouTube and people are taking advantage of that in weird, disgusting ways. Our society desperately needs a systematic solution to this kind of thing. And in the search for that systematic solution, not safe for work artists don't want kids to see their stuff either. We should all be on the same side here. Okay, that wound up being a really lengthy lightning round, but it's over now. With all that in mind, the main thing I'm thinking right now is why do I even feel the need to say any of this? Bronies are a bunch of adult men embracing something that is traditionally feminine. You would think feminists would love that. And bronies, feminism as an ideology says that social stigmas against liking one thing or another because you're a man or a woman need to be destroyed. We should be all over that. So why do these two communities, both of which mean a lot to me, why do I so often feel pulled in opposite directions by them? Well, I have a theory. See, it's reasonably common knowledge at this point that bronies got their start on 4chan. I've never actually used it that much myself, but I have heard terrible, terrible stories of a place where edginess reigns supreme and where triggering shock and disgust are the primary pastimes. A lot of the time, of course, this manifests as needlessly attacking people and social groups in whichever way hurts them the most. But every now and then, the impulse to shock and offend people is directed not at the marginalized, but at the powerful. And one night, when the stars were aligned to aid in our escape, some troll out there thought to himself, Hey, people get really mad when I post pictures of ponies. Hmm. And all of a sudden, there were armies of bronies going everywhere, making as visible a show as possible of liking a show for little girls and not caring what you think about it. Or, even, actively reveling in your outrage and annoyance. Because they realized what gay people had known for a long time. Sometimes the most shocking, provocative thing you can do is just exist, visibly and unashamed. Bronies literally shitposted their way into feminism. Now, I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying that bronies are just as oppressed as gay people or anything like that. But like, 
When ContraPoints talks about straight men being attracted to trans women, she points out how society's expectations for what men should be like can be so insanely random and arbitrary, and simultaneously draconian and rigid, that even if you're completely straight, it is not hard at all to accidentally get splashed with a bit of homophobia in the bigoted chaos of it all. For instance, some men won't even wash their own assholes for fear that some involuntary twinge of anal pleasure might transform them irrevocably into raving homos. Fortunately, as soon as bronies realized that we were being unjustly targeted by society, we did the only thing we could do. We reached out to every other marginalized community on the planet, we listened to their experiences until we were completely on board with their liberation movements, and we formed ironclad alliances with them based on solidarity and mutual understanding. In short, we became woke, as every oppressed community has always done. That's why gay people are never racist, why people of color are never homophobic, and why feminists are never racist, or homophobic, or transphobic, or classist, or ableist. <laughs> Okay, so despite our origins, I do think it's fair to say that we have made progress over time. Like I said, I don't actually have that much experience with 4chan. If it's anything like Tumblr, then the popular image of it is grossly exaggerated. But either way, well, like, is, is it just me or are pronoun stickers a long way from 4chan? As for how much progress we've made, well... To be honest, before this past BronyCon, I was actually really unsure how most bronies feel about feminism. So while I was there, I asked a bunch of them, ten of them to be exact, randomly selected just by wandering the halls and pulling aside stragglers to do quick interviews with. And what I discovered, dear viewer, honestly made me want to pull my hair out. The standard conversation went something like this. So. Why do you think people don't like bronies? It's all about gender norms, man. People are fine with adult men liking Transformers or Star Wars or anything else made for kids, but when it comes to ponies, suddenly we're all f**ks or re -s. That shows you it was never an age thing. It was always a gender thing. It was always about how we don't fit society's narrowly defined idea of what real men are supposed to be like. Okay, so do you think bronies and feminism are related in any way? Mm, no, not really. I don't see what they have to do with each other. I swear to God, it was like pulling teeth. But even though the failure to see these connections was honestly kind of baffling to me, I still found these talks really encouraging in a lot of ways. Like eight of the 10 people I talked to all identified narrow gender roles as the primary reason people think bronies are weird. A lot of the time in leftist circles, we talk a lot about how our use of language can hurt people as well as lift people up. But we also talk about how saying all of the right things means nothing if you treat people like garbage. Like, we talk about how asking questions like, does this person believe in feminism? Or is this person a fascist in their heart? Those questions don't really matter compared to questions like, is this person practicing feminism? Or is this person doing a fascism? And if it's all you leave with today, I would like to propose in this video that bronies are doing feminism. We always have been, and we always will be as long as we're around. When we carry plushies around with us, when we put pictures of ponies on our stuff, when we just tell people we love the show, whenever we do any of that, we're blurring the line between things men do and things women do. And the blurrier that line gets, the harder it is to justify a hierarchy between the two. I titled this video, I'm a brony because feminism, but a more accurate title would probably be, I'm a brony, and that is feminism. The only thing I regret is that we never made the connection to feminism more explicit. Sometimes it's felt like instead of blurring that line between gender roles, we've mostly just been trying to move it so we can slot ourselves back into comfortable masculinity. But you know, that never worked. People never really got used to bronies, so the people that are still here are the people who just stopped caring. I remember one time overhearing a conversation between two bronies I was in line with at a convention, and one of them said that he'd cried at the fan song Lullaby for a Princess, and the other guy just went, well, of course, we've all cried at Lullaby for a Princess. And later, at that same convention, when I was at a big sing-along thing that was generally pretty loud and chatty with lots of conversations in the background, when Lullaby for a Princess played, we all sang along. And when the instrumental section came, we all just sat there, listening, feeling it together. 
That is what being a brony can mean at its best. It gives adult men permission to feel emotions besides detached stoicism and horniness. And it encourages us to laugh together and cry together and love cute things and pretty colors together and generally love together. I don't really care if you call it feminism or not. It's beautiful, it's the same joy and freedom I work for under the banner of feminism, and it is something I am never going to be able to let go of. Speaking of which, BronyCon 2019 was the largest brony convention in history, but it was also the last BronyCon. There are other brony conventions, but the biggest one is shutting its doors for good, and meanwhile, the show that brought us all together is currently airing its final season. I don't think anyone can deny at this point that the brony fandom is waning. In fact, it's probably really weird to a lot of you that I'm even bothering to make a video about bronies in 2019. But, well, they say that the music you listen to when you're young shapes your music tastes for the rest of your life. And you know what I've been listening to for the past six years? My Little Pony fan music. There's a lot to the fandom, but for me, the music has always been the part I keep the closest tabs on. And it's still insane to me how utterly massive the brony music scene is. Heck, the intro and outro music to all of my linguistics videos is always brony music for the simple reason that it's literally all I listen to. Six years of very little besides brony music has changed my music tastes so thoroughly, I think it's pretty safe to say that I'm still going to be listening to brony music when I'm 60. It might be delusional to think that the Phantom will ever be as strong as it once was, but it is equally delusional to think that me or any of the other people who went to Brony Palooza or Nahem Fest in 2019 are gonna suddenly stop listening to Brony music because BronyCon shut down or the show's getting rebooted. A person turning 30 can easily think to himself, I'm never gonna be as big or strong or fit as I used to be, and he would be right. But that doesn't mean his life is over. In fact, most of the good things in his life are probably ahead of him. The Brony fandom is the same way. We're not dying, we're just aging. And while it is true that I'm never going to care about ponies as much as I did when I was 17, it's also true that I'm never going to be as horny as I was back then. Doesn't mean my sex life is over. At this point, being a brony kind of feels to me like my ethnicity, or my home country, or the religion I grew up with, or something like that. I'm not going to think about it constantly, I'm not going to devote my life to it, I'll probably even think about it less as time goes on, but it's still a really big part of who I am and where I came from. I am never going to stop listening to brony music. And I'm never gonna stop looking for more brony music to listen to, and more brony fan stuff in general. And if I can't find any, I'll make some myself. And I am never going to stop feeling solidarity with anyone who's ever had to struggle with their own internalized toxic masculinity before they could give themselves permission to like something for girls. And as long as I am still drawing breath on this earth, we're in this together. <laughs>